Neon Genesis Evangelion. It's an anime which has become famous even outside of people who are fans of anime, and made its way into a lot of mainstream areas and mainstream film culture. And there are great reasons for this, aside from the very interesting, if quite dark and warped story, there are some incredible stylistic decisions made for this show, and I think that the visual direction is something that is very, very impressively well done here. Now, I've done these kinds of videos before, where I break down anime scenes in the past, and I really enjoyed going through those video processes before, so I'd love to continue that fun exercise and take a deeper dive here. So firstly, we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna have to break down that composition right. I drill it into you guys every single video that I make, but the point of this is not that you're gonna pour over every detail, quite the opposite. You are going to find the most key elements and express them and find them in their most simple forms. And that is why we do all of the funny lines over the images. So first thing we're gonna express, we've got this leading line right here, and it's coming down and creating this sort of basin effect. And you can see, right, how that is guiding our eyes from this kind of cliff face here. It's kind of letting our eyes flow down into the Eva that is having this massive lance poking through its head. And it is framing the Eva, all right? It's a bit like the reason that people use vignette in photography, which I've actually been doing a lot in my photos lately. It is just a method that is pretty natural and kind of similar to the way humans see, in which we can just cut out noise and focus down on the important elements, right? If I'm to move this, this vignette here, right? And we just really make it super extreme, right? You see how all of this darkness around just immediately brings all of your attention to the focal element. And this is this is just like, gui like this is baby guiding at this point, you know? You could do this with like a spotlight or something in a movie, but this is really hand-holding the viewer. This is methodology that can get you to a similar place and make your image feel nice and feel tight and feel guided and intentional without doing that whole like baby guiding thing too much. And you know, obviously we can point out the Eva's shape itself to this. It's going to be just kind of important that we get that body shape. This is kind of the um, line of action. We call it an animation. And that's just like basically the line showing the strongest sense of motion. And of course, because there is a lance going through it, the motion is going back like this. All right. And so that's kind of the main line that we're catching, which is the arc of the spine here. We're going to want to make sure to catch that kind of whiplash effect, even though it's a still frame, right? So we'll leave it at that for this one, because I don't want to yap too much, right? We want to get into Blender, we want to get blending. Alright, so first, of course, we're going to talk about something pretty basic, and that is just the assets, models, and textures that you are going to use to construct your render. Alright, so you can see first here, I am modeling the Lance of Longinus, and I'm actually doing this using the Screw modifier, which is a modifier which I have not used and touched very much, because it is used in quite niche circumstances such as this. This is a very good use for it, because we are trying to create this sort of corkscrew effect all the way up the length of the staff. And you can see it's very cool, we can make very small changes to individual vertices and they will perpetuate throughout the entire model. It's all just instance work, and I've also modelled the head of the lance, which is just some pretty basic sub-D modelling. It's not that great in terms of topology, and doesn't look that great up close, but it really doesn't need to. We're modelling to the specification of how far away this is going to be from the camera, and so spending more than like an hour or two on this is just not worth it. And so, you know, we spent like 60 minutes on this, and then we can move on to creating the scene layout. And so we've dragged some basic pine tree assets into here. We've got our EV and we've got our EVA asset in here, which I downloaded from Sketchfab. And then we're going to create that kind of background plane, which is, I think, meant to be a cliff face, but it's basically just that little, like, basin-shaped thing, which is used for a composition. And we textured that using a basic noise texture to create the correct colors. And now we get to placement of assets, aka composing the scene. And again, I'll just reiterate, it's essence over exactness. You do not need to place things meter by meter exactly where they are. You can go by this approach if it's what floats your boat. You just really don't need to. You're going to use the little funny lines and the compositional guides that you drew for yourself and you made earlier, and you're going to use those to inform the rough places where you're going to place your characters. And you can, of course, use guides like the rule of thirds and such to help out here as well. And so you can see I've got the first initial layout of the trees here. And we're going to start posing the Eva and getting it into a position where it is reflecting what we have in the anime. And you can see I started up very, very light with the way that I positioned the Eva. And progressively, I will make this pose more and more extreme. Because animation tends to make things more extreme and exaggerated to get across that emotion before. Because there's not as many limitations. And reflecting that is just important here. It's just good to think about the goals of what you're trying to make. And it simply just doesn't match the um, line of action that I talked about earlier as well. You're not getting the same feel, the same emotion from having the Eva just lean back slightly like it's just taking a little jolt basically you want it to be like a big dramatic thing of like wow this lance has just speared this guy straight through the head pretty crazy you know we're gonna take our lance model at this stage and also position it in the correct place 
and even proportion it quite differently to make it much longer to help it fit the frame a lot better and a lot closer to what we had in the original. And the same with these tree assets, which are very, very simple ones which I've just modeled and stuck together with some mesh combining. And we're just going to place those to very roughly mirror the placements of the trees in the foreground that we have in the anime. Some volumetrics in there help to tie the lighting together more seamlessly and make it look more atmospheric. And then also just kind of keep the background a little bit more separated from the foreground. The debris that is flying out of the back of the Eva. We've got a little bit more going on in the render than we had in the anime. But you know, that's just preference. That's a little bit of artistic expression, which I think is a good thing to exercise in these kinds of projects. Um, what's the last point that we're going to talk about? Colors and processing is a kind of last point that we're going to touch on here. Now, as I talked about earlier with vignette, vignette was helpful here, and I did some blurring as well, which kind of just couples with the vignette. Adding some bloom is, of course, always helpful here, because we want to just fade in between those colors. A little bit of chromatic aberration, which was actually added to Blender, also does help with just some kind of color blending, some more vintage look. And we can fade the colors as well. I did desaturate the colors, and I intentionally desaturated all of the colors except for the Eva, which I actually oversaturated slightly and then dimmed. Because if you notice in the original reference material, it is actually kind of garishly red, the Eva in the original scene. So it is just cool to try and capture that sense within the post-processing parts that we're doing. And of course I added some bonus extras like lens flares and all of that, but that's not really necessary stuff, that's just, you know, added for the hell of it. But I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video, and thank you so much for your patience. For the next few videos I will be working from a mobile workstation with not my usual setup, so it may be a little bit more difficult, but we will try our best, because I really am excited to show you guys some new stuff that I'm wanting to work on, possibly in relation to a brand new extraction shooter in a sci-fi setting and I'll see you guys in the next one. It's been Yezen, goodbye.